are you doing tonight, Tara? Uh, I'm okay. I am. Did you see the weather map? You are in the midst of hell. I am. I am a song of ice and fire. So you, you, you went to... Because uh, I got fires to the left of me, fires you, to the right. It was 97 degrees today. Do you have Tomorrow the, it's going to snow. Do you have that image handy so I can put it up on screen show everybody? Uh, <laughs> no. It's on my Twitter. I could find. Uh, all right. Well, just see if I can find And not like flurries. Like we're supposed to, where I am, they're projecting three to six inches. In the mountains, they're talking like 10 inches. Here we go. Yeah, I've got the picture right here. Okay. I'll head it. You know how I found it? I went to Twitter and I searched for Colorado. It's like the first thing that <laughs> comes up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Th this is this is Colorado right now. Um. See, yeah. you're calling it a song of ice and fire. I'm just sitting here going, everything changed the day the Fire Nation attacked. Um. I don't know what that means. You don't know what that means. No. You need to watch more stuff. That's what that means. Okay. You need to watch more things. But like which things? That was Avatar. Last oh, Airbender. okay. Not that, okay. not that Avatar, the other, the good one. And like yesterday it was snowing ashes. And I'm a hundred miles away from anything that's on fire. But it was snowing ashes and it smelled like there was a charcoal fire going outside all day. Like they were like, stay inside. The air quality sucks. Just don't leave your house. And now tomorrow we're going to get snow. And they're hoping, people are actually kind of excited about the snow because they're hoping it'll smother the fire some. Uh, yes, the, the weather this week in Colorado is yes. <laughs> yes, we have that. <laughs> it's in stock, yeah. Good God almighty. Yeah. What the fuck? la I just, uh and I'm told this is not abnormal. Like people I know that have lived in Colorado, they're like, yeah, that happens. Okay, that's weird. And I have never lived in a place where there's fires. So I'm not used to that. <laughs> like I went outside yesterday and I'm like, holy shit, it's the apocalypse. Cause like the sky was this orangey gold and clouded over, even though the forecast said clear because it was all smoke. And then it was snowing ash. And I'm like, this looks like hell out of the movie Constantine. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Good times here in Colorado. Yeah, we're just collapsing into the apocalypse. All right. Let's uh, let, let, let's uh, put a capstone on that, too. Uh, we got we have more horrible things for you this week, as we are wont to do. Um, shall I get the intro going? Yes. Roll that beautiful intro footage. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? Actually, you're near Catherine, or nearer. She's in Colorado, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you're both in the hellscape. Yeah. That's putting all of my eggs in one basket there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if this hellmouth actually opens up and swallows us, you're on your own next week, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, th let, let's let's jump into the something that, that for a moment, it just... It felt like justice. It felt like the world made sense for a brief, shining second this weekend. And we all joined in. And we all enjoyed it. I'm talking, of course, about what is now being known as Dumb Kirk. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are history averse, Dunkirk was a historic moment where civilian boats were sent by Britain to evacuate British troops during World War II. Dunkirk is where people with more money than sense and a whole bunch of alcohol accidentally attacked each other. Yeah. I like this particular photo because it literally looks like the fist of Poseidon is grabbing that flag. <laughs> the weather was calm. 
the atmosphere festive, which made it all the more surprising when several boats sank Saturday, an event put on by Trump supporters near Austin, Texas. Um, what happened was this. The, the area they went to, what was it called? Uh, lake Travis is not actually a lake. It's a reservoir, which means, oh. yeah. They let you sail in those? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Because it gets the, the water gets filtered before it, you can't just leave water in the open air without having to put it through treatment before it goes yeah. to people. Um. So yeah, it's it's it, it, the uh, they had all of these boats, a lot of boats, right in the Probably middle. Too many boats for such a small body of water. Um. And what happened was the larger boats didn't give a shit about the smaller boats. In a true metaphor for America. And kicked up a tremendous wake, which started making the other boats take on water. This 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 is poetry. All right, everybody. Like, have you seen a better metaphor for the America of capitalism and the GOP? Yeah. Have you? One of, one of the boats inundated with water was carrying several po- pro-Trump flags, including one with the message, quote, Make the liberals cry again. <laughs> well, I think you failed. <laughs> Unless you're talking about laugh so hard we cry. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like, I have no sense of schadenfreude nah. when it's serious. Like, I take no joy in harm coming to people. I know that will sound like a shock and the YouTube comments will be like, well, that's full of shit. It, I don't. No. So like, if, luckily, it looks like nobody was seriously nobody hurt. Was, nobody was hurt because they, they, they had. And it's a very it, small reservoir. It's not yeah. terribly deep. And thank the deity of your choice for that, that nobody was hurt. And that's why this is funny. Almost immediately upon the parade going into motion, uh, Travis County Sheriff's Office began receiving distress calls. <laughs> like the minute it started. No. This is particular. No one thought this through. They're just like, get in, ball, drink, foot beer, chin, blow, air horn noises. <laughs> but it gets better because in a completely different boats for Trump event in Arizona. Where do you even? Arizona's a desert. Lake Havasu. Oh. I forget that they actually have water in Arizona. <laughs> like this is my first time living in a non-coastal state. And I got to be honest, it fucking weirds me out. A boat in a Lake Havasu parade for President Donald Trump caught fire. Mm-hmm. There are no further details at this time. How do you fuck up that bad? How? Wow. Did, how? You are on water. Water! And you somehow managed to burn your boat down? You're surrounded by stuff that puts out fire. I mean, it's not like back in ye olden times with pirates and swashbuckling when you have like lanterns full of oil yeah. on the deck. Yeah. You're in it. You've got an LED light, dude. How did your boat catch fire? What did I you just do? Feel like whatever set of deities you might believe in. I feel like they're making themselves clear. Somebody like, tried to make a point this weekend. Like, well, I mean, weeks ago, fucking Thor almost took out the Washington Monument. Right. I saw that big lightning like, bolt. Whatever your pantheon of choice, they're not happy with America and our whole thing right now. And I think they're making themselves pretty clear. Well, let's let's go to California, which is on fire yet again. I, I, I have joked about this before. Sometimes it's easier for California to tell you tell us which parts of the state aren't on fire. Yeah. Um, so. We're going to have a little Die Hard 2 moment here. How can the same thing happen to the same state twice? This, this it, people are going to go, isn't this a rerun? No, it's not. El Dorado fire revealed sparked by pyrotechnic device at gender reveal party. Can we 
we stop doing this now? Can we stop? Like, I know we need 72 reasons to hit people up for presents these days. Like, but can we stop having a big, stupid party to announce to the world what's going to be in your baby's diaper? And it's even not, it's, it's even not, it's that's, weird. that's, that's the difference between gender and sex. This is, this is what you're going to be regarding your child as until they yeah. decide for themselves. Okay. And I said this online last night and I think I've said it on the show before. I think it's really especially weird that as society moves to increasingly, you know, accept people that do not conform to a gender binary, this is getting bigger. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Like, I think it started as just an extra party, more present thing. Yeah. But I feel like even subconsciously, it's turning into a like, boy, and girl. Yeah, boy it's, girl. it's, and it, of course, what they did was they had a big explosive display. Because when I think babies, I think explosive. Do you know that if you're close enough to an explosion, you can disrupt the pregnancy? I mean, I'm sure you can't even go in a hot tub. Mythbusters talked about this is this is an experience from an from an explosion, not about the pregnancy, but about an explosion. It's not just the boo. It's not just the the, the heat and the fire and the, there is a pressure wave. Yeah, a yeah. shock wave that comes off an explosion. If you're even if you don't get hit by anything in the explosion, if you're too close, parts <coughs> of you are just jelly inside just from that wave of force. And your baby inside you is going, uh, and they don't like it. I, this is exactly the kind of people who would. Cal Fire investigator Captain Bennett Malloy says the family that hosted the Jenner reveal party has been cooperating with authorities, and they actually tried to put the fire out. Oh, what? Do they have a hose? They tried to use water bottles. Which in four foot high grass, you're never going to capture a fire with that. They decided to set off explosives in four foot high grass in California during fire season. Are yep. they going to let these people keep the baby or are they going <laughs> to give it to someone more responsible? Because mm -hmm. clearly these people don't make good decisions. I, I, they're probably going to set the baby on fire. Like, should we have a social worker working with them about their decision-making processes? Yeah, some of the nearby residents, uh, Patrick Patterson, were upset to learn about the blaze. That place, there's nothing green out there. It's a meadow of dry, brown, dead grass. Why would you go out there and think you can light off any kind of firework? Smoke or otherwise, it all has fire. Like, you know the red waste from Game of Thrones? There are parts of this country that are the red waste. And you don't set explosives off there. This is just, I... Certainly not to announce what kind of tackle your baby's going to have. Because that could change anyway. <sighs> why Why would you just... This Explos isn't the thing anywhere else. It's not. Nowhere else in the world does this. This is a very American thing. It's like, you know... God, why? Why this? Why? Ugh. We need 16 parties for everything now. Like, now, bachelorette parties are bachelorette weeks in Vegas. And if you're not available for two weeks of festivities around a wedding, you're a bad friend. And, you know... People have been getting married for hundreds of years. People have been having children for all of human history. It's not that I know it's special to you, but it's not that special. You're not the center of the universe. Well, this next one is a little and small. And I had a wedding. <laughs> this next one's a little smaller, but uh, it's it's a uh, it happened again. This time in Kentucky. And what, what's fascinating to me is when these things happen again is how similar these... There's a, there's a, a, a famous uh, biologist or, or, or animal sociologist. I, I don't know what the term for that is I, off the top of my head. Um, they did a study of, uh, I believe it was 
monkeys on an island. And they gave them sweet potatoes. And they noticed that one of the monkeys had figured out how to wash the potatoes off. And within a short period of time, all the other monkeys were washing their potatoes off. So it's sort of like spread. or it's. I think it spread back to the mainland, even though they're like, how the fuck? That's kind of like this. Except way dumber. Do the monkeys have a psychic network? Because that would be really upsetting. No, but the, the idiots do. Kentucky driver failed to fool police with hand-drawn license plate. Okay, do Kentucky license plates really say bourbon they, on them? I, I, I don't know. Actually, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure. A Kentucky driver's DIY license plate didn't quite fool the police. Millersburg Police Department officers conducting a traffic stop on September 2nd after spotting the license plate that seemed out of place. From a distance, the homemade plate looked somewhat like the real deal. Yeah, if we're talking like a mile away, maybe. Yeah. The Marcus I mean, they tried. Did they? It would make a great high school art project. <laughs> but the tag was missing one key detail. The registration sticker. Okay, here's the best thing. You're drawing the license plate to avoid getting scrutiny from the cops. But the thing cops look at your license plate for, typically, they're not running the numbers for any other reason, except usually, if you don't have a sticker, they use that as justification. So you left off the one thing to avoid scrutiny. But they did, however, remember the trademark on the word Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> priorities how do people keep doing you you could go to a kinko's yeah and get nice stock paper you don't even have to go to the person up front and be like i want to print out this license plate have them give you the hairy eyeball you can do it yourself they won't even pay attention you get some nice photo stock paper you can print out a license plate and, it's gonna, and then if you put one of the license plates covers on it, it at a distance, it's going to work. Yeah. And I guess, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. The reason we don't hear about those people is they get away with it. Your ass couldn't go spend two dollars in Kinko's. <laughs> or you could bust out a Sharpie. Two. I am impressed with their rendering of the state of Kentucky. because Kentucky's know. a hard one. I, they they do they, they have some talents I guess. I, I mean uh, they're gonna do great making license plates in prison. <laughs> <laughs> they understand that the, the, they they understand the whole aesthetic. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're intimate with it. They're gonna be a supervisor on the license plate line in prison. Speaking of police, um, we needed this, uh. We we are looking for allies everywhere, in a, in in this in this terrible world. Um, what with you know what's going on in America right now? A lot of people, I, I want you I want you to, to know, a lot of people are on your side because even you got to watch this video. This is this is beautiful. This is this is the best. This is the best thing you're gonna see all day. Even the goats are agreed. All cops are bastards. A goat with no respect for authority climbed into a deputy's car, chewed on her paperwork, and knocked her to the ground. <laughs> According to the to Douglas, fair, does any goat have respect for authority? According to the Do you Douglas, a goat? According to the Douglas County Sheriff's Department, the deputy was serving civil papers at a residence when she noticed a goat inside her patrol car. The deputy explained that due to the number of houses she visits daily, she routinely leaves her vehicle's door open because she has to retreat a number of occasions of vicious dogs. Footage shows the deputy attempting to get the goat out of her car. After finally getting the goat to exit the vehicle and retrieving the documents, the animal headbutts her to the ground. The deputy is not physically injured. 
Go, it's like a cab motherfuckers. Let, let's let's skip ahead a little. I want you to see this because here she comes. She's coming back to the car. And look at the little gold boy. Come on. Come on. Get out. <laughs> Go and say no. She she tries to get it to stop eating the paper. She's going around the other side now. We're, we're gonna get it out. Don't slap the butt. Oh, no. Don't slap him on the butt. She grabbed the horns, too. Like, I just... Uh, okay. oh, look at the dogs. The dogs are like, don't fuck with that goat, man. <laughs> <laughs> we they don't fuck with that goat. I think you're a little behind. I got the full video here. Oh, they, yeah, she's grabbing the horns. She's slapping the goat. Don't slap the goat. You deserve this, lady. You sit on your butt and you think about what you did. <laughs> <laughs> the goat, it's like, has no regard for her at all. Which is, if this is, she's kicking the coffee around. <laughs> the goat does not care. Goat's out of the, she's still eating the paper. She's like, this is lunch, fuck you. Like, this is delicious, and <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I've seen this many times, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> Is that a picky jumping down from her perch? Oh, yeah. Perch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, look, we can see a piggy exit. That made my day. That. The goats are on our side, people. Power of the goats. Just, if, you, if you need allies, go to the petting zoo. Um, they got your back. <laughs> fucking, what the fuck did you do? You fucking with the goat. I uh, mean, it's not like you can make it a cop. <laughs> so that would be, that sounds like an 80s movie. It does, yeah. He's too old for this shit. She's a goat. Together, they solve crime. Goats are one of those prey species that are built specifically to not take your shit. Yeah. Like I said, have you ever met a goat with respect for authority? Because I have not. And I have met several goats. Like, I, I always think it's a little funny that they put goats in petting zoos. Because goats don't give a single crusty fuck. <laughs> they don't. I don't know why we consider that a safe animal to put around children. <laughs> I just, the video is so good. It made me feel so good. She's, she's like, go on now. Get out. Get out. Go on now. Nope. Yeah, you're not the boss of a goat ever. They're like cats. They're like cats with helmets. Ah. <laughs> uh... Goat lives matter. All right, we, we had <laughs> we had that lovely respite uh, respite. I can think words respite because um, this next story. Oh shit. Um. Um. I I don't I I don't know how to 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 segue into this, so we're just gonna jump on in both feet. Woman sentenced to jail after she glued her vagina to frame ex-boyfriend. I know I said net last week that the reason you have exes is to frame them for crime. <laughs> this, it came back to bite you, Tara. It but came I back. But I using their car to drive through the Home Depot. <laughs> it came back on you. It came back on you hard. Who are you really punishing? A woman identified as Vanessa Gesto has been sentenced to 10 years in prison after she glued her own private parts in a bid to frame her ex-boyfriend for the crime. Uh, Gesto accused Rico of capturing, of kidnapping her outside her home uh, and later abandoning her while semi-naked after squeezing the super glue to her private parts. Her lie began to fall apart when investigators discovered closed-circuit TV camera footage from a uh, supermarket showing Gesto buying the glue and a kidnap kit, including knives she used to harm herself. Not only that, 
It's also discovered that no vehicles, save for a council lorry bin, uh, bin lorry, sorry, passed the uh, area she claimed to have been assaulted and tortured. Guest owner claims that she had been kidnapped in a black car. Why couldn't you just fake the kidnapping? <laughs> I mean, you did a terrible job of faking the kidnapping, by the way. I don't know yeah. why you buy all that shit at the same store in the same time. Everybody knows not to do that. <laughs> but you could have just badly faked a kidnapping. You didn't need to super glue your <laughs> vagina shut. That is not what Cardi B meant. <laughs> That's not the kind of WAP Cardi B is talking about. <laughs> Sticky ass. <laughs> yeah. What? I, Closed uh, ass. That's a cap. <laughs> what? I, Closed for business. Why is it? I mean, if we watch like you watch movies and you see all these people with their elaborate crime plots, whether it's a, it's like a funny heist or it's like a villain or whatnot with all their elaborate plots. And then your dumbass just blunders through. You're not even just not taking any. And honestly, all you have to do to pull off was watch Gone Girl. <laughs> Her shit was on point. It's an instruction <laughs> manual. I, I, I personally, I, I kind of hate this because this is one of those situations where it makes it harder to believe other survivors and victims. Because you too. fucking cry. You didn't just cry wolf. You glued your vagina shut. Because every fucking incel on Reddit's going to be like, well, there was a lady. It's really hurt. Yeah. So thanks for that. Fucker. Just. just I, if you I have to bring your ex for a crime. You have to think about it. You have to steal their car and then commit a felony using that car. I have over my long and stupid steal life. Steal their identity and buy a bunch of guns. I have over my long and stupid life experienced many interpersonal problems of varying degrees. Never once have I thought that the solution to my difficulties with others in a social context, in a relationship context, was to glue my holes shut. Like, I've had some bad breakups. And I have considered no longer allowing people access to my vagina. I have never considered physically sealing it like a tomb. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Vagina. Right, like, like you can just get a piercing and hang a little closed sign down there. <laughs> you don't have to go this far. Also, things need to exit that organ. Yeah, they do. Because you don't look like you've hit menopause yet. So yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna have to put acetone on there to get it off. And it's gonna be fucking horrible. Yeah. Like. Who are you really punishing? Even if he went to prison, who have you really punished? Yeah. Uh, our last one is from France. I, I don't... I'm having a hard time blaming anyone for this. Let's just chalk this up to the vast absurdity that is the human experience. Man blows up part of house in France while trying to swat a fly. The man in his 80s was eating dinner on Friday evening when he became annoyed at a fly buzzing around him. He picked up an electric fly swatter. I did not even know that was a thing. Yeah, what's an electric fly swatter? I'm figuring it's because if you're an older person, you don't actually, you can't like necessarily... Throw yeah, your like, arms what is it? It's it looks like a tennis racket, and the, the there's metal in it, so that you don't have to hit them hard with force to kill them. So it's like a portable bug zapper. Yeah. I only know this because a friend of mine and I, Julian, got a hold of one and had a 
blast with it. You can imagine. I can, and I wish I couldn't. <laughs> um, he picked up the electric fly swat and took aim at it as he was unaware of a gas cylinder leaking at his home. A reaction between the swatter and the gas caused an explosion and part of his kitchen to blow up. Blast also damaged a section of his roof, and the house is currently uninhabitable. Somehow the man managed to escape the catastrophe with just a burn to his hand. The family are repairing the house while he resides at a local campsite. It is, <laughs> it is unknown what happened to the fly. That's just a hell of an afternoon. That's like that that Plimptoon. <laughs> yeah. The Bill Plimpton cartoon of the worst day. Yeah. That's that guy's having that day. I can't really blame him for this. I don't know who to blame for this. This isn't anyone's really fault. This is just one of those things that this confluence happens. Yeah. And from it erupts madness. You have angered the fates, sir. You're going to have to explain to your contractor that a fly blew up your house. Do they have home insurance in England? This is France. And I'm, France. They probably do. They have do. homeowners insurance in France? Is that a thing? I mean, they probably do, but I don't under, I don't think it covers acts of like, fly. Imagine having to explain that to your adjuster. <laughs> Flo shows up in her little white apron. <laughs> What happened in the kitchen? Well, there was a fly. <laughs> I just, it's, it's that, and I love that, that they were, the Sky News was like desperate here for what the fuck do we do? They didn't have art, so they just put this picture up. It, it's a fly. You know, Popcorn Junkie makes a good point. Mm. The thing aren't fucking around since those TikTok witches hexed the moon. <laughs> Fuck around and That's... find out. I just, I'm trying to just imagine, you know, getting up, there's a fly, I grab a fly swatter, and suddenly the house explodes. <laughs> Someone in the chat is like, yeah, I can imagine Mr. Bean doing this. It's a, it's a fucking Mr. Bean joke. Would your first assumption not be <sighs> that it was an explosive fly? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That it was some kind of super weapon. And what's best about this is he's fine. <laughs> oh my God, that fly must have just come from Taco Bell. <laughs> and this is a story he can tell people, but he's fine. <laughs> Thank God he's fine. That is like, that's what kind of makes this so absurd because you're sitting there like fucking Wiley e. Coyote with the yeah. blast marks on your face. No eyebrows. <laughs> You blink and it makes the xylophone sound. Because <laughs> this is, this, you just lived a looty tune. And the fly just lands on your head. <laughs> I guess that's the first thing we, we've learned this week is that, that the human experience is absurdity. It's frightening and absurd. Yeah. We've learned that in no circumstance do you glue your holes shut. No. If okay. it's if if it's one of the holes you came with, if it's factory standard, don't glue it shut. You're gonna need it. Right. If I mean, if you like make a hole in yourself, yeah. Uh oh, shut that up. If it, you came with you, yeah. no, no. If you enter this world with that orifice. You should keep it. Yeah. And you can do stuff with it later, whatever you like. But don't glue it shut. That's, that's, no, that's, that's not how that works. That's not in the manual. They don't cover that. Um, we've learned that goats hate cops, which that's kind Welcome of comforting. Welcome to the resistance, goats. Um, goats and Poseidon have joined the resistance this week. We've learned that, uh, the people who make the the fake license plate at Kinko's don't get caught. Um, we've learned that gender reveal parties, and someone put this in Twitter and they were absolutely correct. I wish I had them to quote them. Gender reveal, reveal parties 
have killed more wildlife than plastic straws. It's true. It is literally fucking true. <laughs> That's upsetting. It's observable. It's 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 quantifiable. Um and finally we've learned this week um that you will be struck down. And you will not rise more powerful than anyone could possibly imagine. They're just going to have to tow your boat out of the reservoir. <laughs> there, so I, I forget who it was who was talking. Like, uh, it was also on Twitter. We're talking about th there is like one small, tiny boat towing service around that. It's like for, for days and days, there's that nothing guy, happening. That guy's making a killing. It was like the old Maytag man commercials where he's just sitting there. <laughs> Nobody ever calls. <laughs> then all of a sudden, his fucking phone won't stop. My time has come. It's at last. <laughs> and the goat came running through and was like, A cab. No. No. 